Hey everybody, this is Tim. I'm the editor over at managersresourcehandbook.com where you can go for all sorts of tools, tips, and advice to help you manage your team and better run your company. Today we're going to talk about how to build a risk assessment matrix. Now, when it comes to project management, there's lots of tools out there that you'll find. There's things like heat maps, which are a color spectrum of red, which fades into yellow, which fades into green. And you'll see people put little dots on those charts to indicate the severity of each risk. Some people just like to use a low, medium, or high scoring you know, uh, system for identifying risk uh, severity. The problem with these techniques, though, is that they are, I, uh, you know, they're not comparing um, the same thing. You're comparing, for example, if you have a concern of the supplier who has to provide a key part for your product or your assembly, Right? One key supplier, if they're late with their shipment to you, that's a big problem. That's a time issue for you. Right? If, they're, if they're delayed, it's going to cause you delays. That's a time issue. Now, another risk might be that you see uh, you might have to travel more to visit your customer, right? which is an expense. Travel is an expense. So how do you compare a supply chain delay issue to a expense issue? Right? How do you say which one's more severe, which one's a bigger problem? The technique that we're going to go through um, actually deconstructs these into a single variable, in this case cost, so you could easily compare on a numerical basis the severity or impact of each risk. So let's get into it. So what is a risk assessment matrix? A risk assessment matrix is a tool. First and foremost, it is a tool, right? It doesn't manage your project for you. It doesn't uh, fix problems that exist. It is simply a tool that helps you make decisions, okay? So it's going to organize the concerns and risks you foresee. It'll include the potential impacts to the project. It'll identify the key people or people, uh, individuals responsible for managing each risk. It'll compute the cost for each risk, and it'll state the likelihood that that risk will occur. And then it sums all this to a total potential risk value for the project as a function of cost. So essentially, a risk assessment matrix helps project teams plan for problems. It'll help manage the risk, it'll help prioritize your action, and it'll help communicate information to people outside of your project team. Perhaps most importantly, this technique will allow you to take the cost that you've computed and factor that into your business case, right? So when you, you're basically taking some amount of money and adding it into the anticipated amount of funding you need for the project, which strengthen, strengthens your business case. You're financially planning for problems, and you're putting some money in there to account for that. So the key steps that we're going to go through here in a moment to identify or to uh, create a risk assessment matrix are to identify the risks. You want to evaluate the impact of each risk. You also want to talk about and define ways to mitigate each risk. You want to calculate the total cost of each risk, define the probability, and then sum to get the total potential risk value. So you can download this exact template that I'm going through now and get step-by-step -step instructions as well at that link you see there at the bottom of the screen. So here's the risk matrix example that we're going to go through. And you can see it's neat, it's orderly, it's pretty, um, it's manageable, fits on one page, great for communicating and sending out to uh, you know, your CEO or your boss, whatever the case may be. And we're going to go through each of these sections one by one. So first, it's always good as a communication tool to have a basic uh, header to the document. So in this case, we've got uh, a basic summary of the project. We've got the project name. Um, we've got the, the project manager. We've got key dates associated with the project. So anybody who's new to the team or who's sitting in on a, on a program review or something like that can get a basic feel for what the project is about and who's working on it. For the same reason, it's always good to have a small financial snapshot of what's going on with the program. So you're never going to you know, track your whole program financials in this spreadsheet, but it's great to have a little snapshot um, in the upper right corner in this case that shows somebody you know, the basic size of the program in terms of uh, the, the money involved. In this case, we've included the return on sales, um, the total investments that were planned for the project, We've included the percent of budget spent, which is a great way to indicate to people, you know, roughly where you are um, on the project in terms of, of how much money you've spent. 
And then we've included the risk values as well. Also in the header, we included a, a small key or legend here that define the categories of each risk. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. But you can see here we've used uh, cost, schedule, resources, and other as various categories. So let's talk about the actual risk aspects here. So the first thing here we did was we identified the risk, right? So the way you go about doing this is you simply meet with the project team. You want to brainstorm all possible issues and concerns, and then you want to group them into buckets. So we've identified one here in this fictional example of a customer delay a release uh, into the end market. So for example, you provide software or some product to your customer, and they use it for their product, which they sell to their customer, right? So you've identified with your team that, hey, we can do our stuff on time, but if the customer delays their uh, release of the product into the market, it could impact us, right? So when you go through and identify the risks, I want to point out that it's important to be thorough. You want to be detailed, but you also need to be realistic, right? A lot of times people have a tendency to kind of put everything possible into these types of things, but, you know, can an earthquake occur and affect your manufacturing plant? Sure, that certainly could happen. But is that something that you should factor into the risk value of a program? No. So the key point here, be realistic. Make sure it's tied to the, the risks you identify are tied to your project. The next column over of our risk matrix is the impact of the risk. So when you're talking about the risks themselves, it's also good to talk about, hey, if this happens, what does it do to us? How does it affect our project? Is it more time? Is it added cost? Does it require more resources? Does it change the pricing strategy? Um, so in this case, we identified that a customer delay of a release into the market of their product, it's going to delay the recovery of our investment. And we're expecting sales from that, our product, right? So if they delay their uh, release, it's going to delay our sales of our product to them. So again, from a communication standpoint, it's always good to have this type of thing in your uh, risk matrix so that somebody new or your boss or an executive sees this and they can kind of get a good feel for, for the nature of each risk. As I mentioned above, we've categorized each risk, in this case by cost, schedule, resources, and a category for other. This is really, again, for you know communication. It helps people get a quick uh, feel for each risk and how it affects the project. It's also great for sorting data and searching for information. So if you want to look for all the items that, for example, affect schedule, you can easily sort and filter through the data. Now, we used cost, schedule, resources, and other, but you can set up any sort of category um, you know, method that you like. So you could do it by product family, you could categorize risks by customer, by regional location, uh, whatever is best for your projects and your your industry. Uh, one point thing uh, I want to one thing I want to point out here is that um, risks can have more than one category, right? So don't don't waste energy trying to f argue over which exact category a risk is in. It's really meant here for sorting and organizing data later on. So you've talked about the risk, you've talked about how it's going to impact the project, and you've categorized them. The next thing you want to talk about is how to mitigate the risk, right? Now, you can't control outcomes, but you can certainly do what you can to influence them. Now, that is the, the key here, right? What are you doing as a team to try to minimize the risk and make it go away, right? So the key question is, what can you do to protect the project? In this case, we identified that, hey, if customer delay is a concern, we can add a, uh, a a penalties clause to our contract that they would have to pay you, you know, some amount of money due to the delay on their end. Um, you may want to split, for example, instead of one payment at the end of the project, you may want to uh, split it up into multiple phases just so that you get uh, a partial payment over time just to, again, keep money coming in, minimizing your impact of, um, of their delay. The next thing is to identify who's responsible. Um, ownership is a form of accountability, right? So list the name of the individual or individuals responsible for, for managing and overseeing each risk. It's not about a witch hunt. It's not about, you know, finding someone to blame. It's, but it is about trying to make sure that there is somebody watching out for it. So if there's questions about it or if there's issues, you know who to talk to. 
And they also know that they're on the hook to make sure that they are doing everything they can to mitigate the risk. So let's start talking about the financials. The next piece of our risk assessment matrix is the total risk value. Now, this number, in this case, $45,000, represents the value the risk would have or the cost the risk would have if it happens. Okay, so if it were to happen, what is that cost going to be? Okay, this is very much, the way you come up with this number is very similar to estimating a new program. So you're going to say how much more time is needed, how many hours, what hourly rates would, would be charged, and uh, what additional expenses may there be, for example, travel, material, supply, software. So this is basically, if the risk happens, what's it going to cost, and what does the program have to pay for? So as you can tell, it's obviously based on a lot of assumptions. So it's always good to have your assumptions nearby, either in the same spreadsheets, on another tab, somewhere else, um, that you can always go back to, to, to check on them and to verify them over time. Now, in this case, we said the first item, if a customer delays their release of the product into the market, it may take another 300 hours of our time to talk with them about it or to change our shipment schedule or whatever the case may be. You've identified the hourly rate of those particular individuals, um, cost to your company. Um, maybe you say, "Hey, we gotta we gotta spend travel money to to you know change some of this stuff around or to talk to the customer," and maybe that's a total of sixteen thousand dollars approximately that you've identified, and maybe there's another twenty thousand dollars of other expenses that you you see. When you compute all the total, all these. Um, numbers they total into forty five thousand dollars okay that you saw on the previous screen now the next step here is really this is an estimate right so the next thing is to estimate the probability of occurrence and this is you know what does the project team feel the likelihood of this actually happening is okay so in this case we said the you know, project team said look don't know if it's going to happen, but maybe it's going to happen. So let's say about 60% chance that the customer is actually going to delay this um, product release into the market. Okay. Now, again, this is a tool. And so over time, you want to continuously revisit the probabilities. If a project does become real, you would set the probability to 100% because, hey, that $45,000 is now needed. Okay. So the probability is based on the team's you know, feel for the project. Um, if it becomes real, it's 100%. If you eliminate it, if it goes away, then you reduce the probability down to zero, okay? Finally, uh, the most, you know, perhaps the, one of the key numbers here is the, the, the factored value. In this case, it's the total value you calculated in step six multiplied by the probability of occurrence in step seven to calculate the expected value or weighted value. So if it happens, basically what you're saying here is, I have a 60% chance of paying $45,000 or I expect $27,000 of risk to occur here, okay? Ultimately, what you wanna do is continue through this matrix and identify all the risks and go through the same process as we just went through. And then you tally up the numbers. In this case, you've got two key numbers at the bottom here. Number one, you'll see $295,000. This is the total value of all the uh, total risks that we calculated in step six, so unweighted value. This value is basically worst case of all these things happen, you're saying it's about $295,000 of expenses and costs that you foresee. Now that's, that, that might be pretty ugly for your business case, right? But more importantly, what you're saying is when I factor in the likelihood of these things happening, I really expect only about $100,000 of risk to occur, right? That's based on your probabilities. And that is the total of the predicted risk values that we calculated in step eight, okay? There is a third option, which is zero, right? And that's basically if you want to ignore a risk value and you, want, you just want to say that, you know, you're going to mitigate the risks and, and just deal with it later, you can assume nothing. But the reason these values are helpful is it helps you understand the financial impact of a risk or all the risks to a project. So you can factor this type of information into your business case, into your financial models to basically plan 
to have money available to deal with some of the problems that are likely to occur. So final tips for creating your project risk, risk matrix. Um, it's always good to start building your project risk matrix before the project starts. So if you're build, bidding on a new program or you're pursuing some new business, um, you know, start building one of these matrices early on. This helps you uh, really fully get a, uh, get a full picture of the risk for the project that you're looking at. You want to factor the costs into your business case and your financial models. You know, there's a variety of ways you can do that, but the key is, as we saw in the previous uh, slide, you know, there's a couple key numbers that you've computed here to um, essentially quantify how much risk, how much financial exposure you may have as a result of this project that's not planned for, right? And that's very important information when building a business model. Step 10 is really to reevaluate and revisit the project uh, risk assessment matrix often with the project team. You want to you know, go through this on a regular basis, say monthly, or quarterly, and make sure it's up to date and accurate. So you wanna to talk to the team and say, hey, have any of these risks become real? Are they still valid or have they been eliminated? In some cases, you, know, are, you wanna look at the probabilities. Are they still accurate? You know, maybe you did something or the customer changed something or whatever the case may be. And a risk that you saw was only 25% chance is now like 75% chance of likely to occur, right? So revisit the probabilities. And then of course, as we know, between the beginning and the end of a project, things always change. Are there anything, is there anything new to add to the list? Okay. So you want to change the probabilities and assumptions as needed over time to continuously understand the financial values, right? Things change over time. It's important to revisit it over time, as we mentioned in step 10. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, again, you can download this entire presentation and um, get step-by-step -step instructions at the uh, link you see there at the bottom of the screen. So here you have it. This is our risk assessment matrix. If you download this from the website, you can certainly print this out as, a, as an example for you to build your own risk matrix for your projects. Once again, my name is Tim. I'm the editor over at Manager's Resource Handbook. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. You can find us on the web, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Talk to you soon. Thanks.